Now that we have our skills set up, the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure the endpoint. And the endpoint is going to tell the skill how to, or the Amazon service, uh, how to contact and communicate with the code or the service that we're going to be creating to handle the requests that come in from users. And so at a high level, again, um, what's happening, the flow, if you recall from the, uh, the technical overview, a user speaks to an Alexa enabled device, the device forwards the audio stream to the Alexa service, the Alexa service uh, takes that audio stream and converts it to text and then determines uh, based on the interaction model, what the user is requesting or the machine learning uh, determines what the user is requesting. And then if the request is for a skill, the request is sent from the Alexa service to a skill service. And the skill service is code that we're going to create as developers to process the requests that come from the Alexa service and in turn respond back to the Alexa service with instructions or responses for how the Alexa service should respond back to the user. The important point here is just to, to know that everything is going through the Alexa service. So uh, the requests coming in from the user are going first through the Alexa service, from the Alexa service to our skill service, and then from our skill service back to the Alexa service and back to the user. The skill service can be hosted by really any any web server that can uh, consume or, or, or understand the requests that are coming in. And they're, they're just JSON requests. If you're not familiar with JSON, uh, it is the, it's an acronym that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Uh, this is JSON actually. So it's, um, it, it's a text format and it is structured in a way that makes it easy for computers to work with. Uh, and because it's text, humans can see what's going on also. But basically, a message in this format goes back and forth between the Alexa service and the, the skill service. And so the endpoint here is configuring where the Alexa service is going to send those messages and where the Alexa service is going to get responses back from those messages. And in our example, we're going to use a service that's provided by Amazon Web Services called Lambda, AWS Lambda. And so we're going to select Lambda here. And then the um, AWS, Amazon Web Services, this is actually different from the developer, the Amazon Developer uh, Council. So you're going to need two different accounts. You'll need one for the uh, Amazon Developer Council, which we set up already, the Amazon Developer Account, and then another for our Web Services account. Uh, Amazon Web Services account. And this one is when you sign up, you will be prompted for a credit card, but there is a free tier. So even though you've got to provide a credit card, nothing that we're doing in this course is going to cost you anything. Again, we're using this Lambda service here, which provides a million free requests per month, which is way more than you're going to need for this course. So no, no worries about that, but uh, you will need to provide a credit card. So I thought I'd mention that. I'm not going to walk through the sign up process here either because it's pretty straightforward. But once you have an account, you would just go ahead and sign in. And you would go to the uh, Lambda service. So if you just search for it here, it'll remember down there. And the Lambda service allows you to run code without setting up servers and managing servers and all of that stuff. So it's really great and uh, simple to use for the most part. It lets you just focus on your code and not all of the infrastructure stuff that is um, uh, not not the, the main thing when it comes to uh, writing code and creating services. The um, Let's just jump in here and, and go through it. So the, uh, the, the service, when you go in to create uh, a Lambda function, you're going to create the code. You've got a couple of different options here. You can author a function from scratch, and uh, we'll take a look at doing that later in the, uh, the course. Um, but you can also use Blueprints or the serverless application repository. And these are uh, like templates for setting up uh, um, backend services that are uh, hosted in Amazon Web Services. 
And that's what we're going to use for our example here. So if you select the uh, serverless application repository and then just uh, filter by Alexa. And the, um, let's see, skills, how to, we are looking for the facts skills, this one right here. So the Alexa skills kit, no JS facts skill. And this is the one that provides a, a, a random fact, which is uh, the, the back end to what we grabbed from the GitHub in the last lesson. So we're going to go ahead and select that and you can leave the defaults here and then just choose deploy. And once it's deployed, I'll show you what we, uh, what we get here. Um, it is still deploying, loading our resources. And there we go. All right, so now we can go over to the skill that was created, uh, the Lambda function rather, that was created. And if we click on the Lambda function, we can see the code that was provided as a part of that template here. So this is JavaScript, the programming language here, uh, Node.js, and when you create Lambda functions, you actually have the option of using a, a variety of different programming languages, C Sharp, Go, Java, Python, and uh, Node.js, which is a runtime environment for JavaScript, which is what we're using here. And so we'll, uh, we'll talk more about the, the, the code a little bit later on, but you can just browse this and see um, kind of what, what What's happening? This one again is a an example that's going to give a a random space fact. So one of the facts is a year on Mercury is just eighty eight days long. To make this work, this is this is important here. This trigger. So the Alexa skills kit. The Alexa service is not available in all regions. So if for whatever reason you run into issues here or you don't see the trigger added, you wanna go up here and you wanna make sure that you are in the, well, it doesn't need to be the US East region. The US East region does support the Alexa skills kit for sure. Not all of them do, a lot of them do. Uh, but if you have any question and you just want to get to a region that supports the skills kit for um, going through these steps, you can just select US East because I know that one does. And then um, the Alexa skills kit is going to um, uh, enable the Alexa service to call this function. And so we are going to now just need to configure our Alexa skill so that it can access this backend skill service. And we're gonna do that by copying this up here, which is a unique identifier for this function that's called an ARN or an Amazon resource name. So I'm just copying that. And then I'm going back to my developer console. So at developer.amazon.com and to the service endpoint. And I am just going to paste that in, that endpoint to that Lambda function. And if it's all in there, I can just save here. And it's saved. So at this point, I have a complete skill set up. I've got the skill set up in the developer console. I've got the interaction model in here that I copied and pasted from the example on GitHub. And then I saved the interaction model and I built it. And the build process is what trains the Alexa service to recognize a request for this skill, which is named SpaceFax. And uh, it will be invoked using that name also, SpaceFax. And then we configured the skill to point to the skill service. And so now we can go ahead and test. 
And this is where we're going to uh, leave off for this lesson. And then in the next lesson, we'll look at testing and talk a little bit about the testing process.